Hi, my name is Clint Foreman. I am a flutist, as you can see. I've been playing the flute for about 30 years. I started when I was in middle school back in Austin, Texas. I've been asked how I started to play the flute many times because a lot of times boys don't play the flute, which I think is a mistake. Flute is an instrument for everybody. Um, and honestly, I can't tell you an exact answer other than my mom plays the flute and my dad plays the clarinet. And so when I was growing up, I used to hear them playing music together and hear them at their band practice. And I think that I always enjoyed the sound of the flute. And I know that one time I was at a marching band uh, performance that my dad was giving and my mom was also playing and she had a piccolo and I think I was maybe seven years old at the time and I asked if I could hold the piccolo and look at it and I picked it up and I just went boop and I made a little sound on it and if you know anything about playing the flute uh, it's not the easiest instrument to make a sound on initially uh, so all the people around me were just like wow he just made a sound on the piccolo. And I think that that maybe clicked in my brain. And so when it came time for me to choose an instrument, when I was at the end of my fifth grade year, uh, I, went, I walked into a big room full of instruments, every single instrument laid out in front of me. And they said, what do you want to play? And I said, I want to play the flute. Uh, so I picked up the flute and they said, well, can you make a sound on it? And I went, boop. I think it sound, probably sounded something like And they said, okay, you can play the flute. Um, and I never stopped practicing from that day forward, basically. Here in the BSO, I've been here for 10 years. Uh, this is my 10th season. Uh, I didn't have this little gray patch right here back uh, when I started 10 years ago. Uh, I play second flute in the orchestra. There are four flutists and piccolo players in the orchestra, and I am basically the support system of our section. There are two people who play principal flute, both named Elizabeth. It's easy for me to remember. And they have like the big solos and everything. And then there's all the harmony and everything that happens underneath. That is what I do. And I am often playing with people who play second clarinet, who sit right behind me, and second oboe, who sit a few chairs down from me. So my job is more filling in the gaps so that the big solos can be heard and be enjoyed by everyone. Uh, and I'm Mr. Mr. Support, I would say. Okay, so now we're gonna talk a little bit about instrument care and maintenance. Uh, the flute itself comes generally in three parts. So let me show you. If I take apart my case here, move this phone out of the way. This is what a flute case looks like. And when you take it apart, it fits in like this. Now, if you'll notice what I did there, I didn't grab any of the parts that have keys by the keys. If you grab it and smash, it will hurt your instrument. So what you wanna do, this is the bottom piece of the flute called the foot joint. You grab it down here at the very bottom past the keys so that you don't hurt the keys. And then you grab this main portion of the flute with, all, with most keys, it's called the body. And you're gonna grab this up at the top where there's no keys here. So that when you are putting it together, very gently, you're not smashing the keys. Because when you grab the keys and smash them, they move around and then all of a sudden your flute doesn't work anymore and then you have to get it repaired. Now the top part of the flute is called the head joint. I do the same thing, I grab the body right here at the top, and I take the head joint and I put it in, twist it gently until you have it lined up the way you like it, and then it's all put together. Now, in addition to not grabbing the keys as you're putting it together, it's important not to try to fix your instrument by yourself. Uh, people have been studying for years and years and years to learn how to make flutes well. And there are a whole lot of little tiny screws and pins and all kinds of things. I don't even try to fix my flute myself and I've been playing the flute for 30 years. I take it to a guy named Eugenio who is very good at repair, but there are many, many good repair people. So if you have a problem and you can't get a sound out of your flute, 
always, always take it to your teacher first, uh, and maybe they can recommend a repair person, or maybe if they know how to do a little bit of repair, they can do it for you. Um, as far as maintenance, you wanna make sure that you have something like this. For my, mine's a little bit old and raggedy, but it's basically just a stick with a little slit up here at the top. And you need some kind of, this one is made out of silk, but you need some kind of cloth that you can use to clean the water out of your flute before you put it back in the case. If you put a wet flute in the case, the pads here under your keys will start to mold and smell bad, and nobody likes that. Uh, so what you do is you take off the foot joint, you push the, the cloth through, then you look, nice and clean. Then you put it in the case. I'm gonna turn it towards me now, sorry. Then you take apart the head joint and the body and you do the same thing. Push it right through so that it's nice and dry in there. Put it in the case. And then push it up here into the head joint very slowly because there's a cork up here and you don't wanna push it too hard. Twist a little bit, try to get out all the water. Take it out, see there's a little bit of, I don't know if you can tell, but there's some wetness on here because I've been playing the flute. So it, the condensation builds up in there. You clean it out. Look, nice and clean. Put it in the case. Close the case. Now your flute's nice and safe. All right, now we're gonna talk a little bit about practicing. Uh, practicing is important because that's how you get better at, well, literally anything. Uh, in this case, we're talking about practicing the flute. Uh, I've been practicing the flute for 30 years, and over that time, my style of practice has evolved many times. Uh, if you're just beginning, there are a few things that are very important to, to work on as you're becoming a new flutist. First is scales. Scales are always number one. They teach you about the key signatures. They teach you how, how your fingers have to move in sequence and a variety of other things. They're very important. I'll just play one simple scale for you. This is C major. That's it. That's what one major scale sounds like. There are actually major and minor scales. That's for another day. Um, I would say the amount of time you practice, contrary to popular belief, is not the most important thing. The most important thing is that you concentrate on what you're doing. So I think of quality of practice as being much more important than quantity of practice. I, I do remember when I was a beginner flutist in middle school. I started in sixth grade and we had little time, uh, pract practice cards is what they were called, where we had to fill out how much time we practiced each day. And our teachers act asked us to practice for 20 to 30 minutes a day. And I think that at the beginning, there's no reason to, to go crazy and practice for hours and hours a day. I think a few minutes a day, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, maybe an hour, if you're really feeling inspired, is a good amount to where you can learn a lot very quickly, especially if it's focused practice. I have never practiced other than maybe once or twice in my life more than four hours in a day. Uh, and that's because when I practice, I practice very, very methodically, and I turn off the TV, I turn off my phone, I pay attention to what I'm doing, and I work towards a specific goal. And I think that that's the best way to practice. But it's important, I think that this is an important concept to apply to anything that you wanna be good at in, in your life. If you wanna be good at math, you probably don't wanna do math while you're watching a TV show. But for me, the most important thing is that I pay attention to what I'm doing and I learn from my mistakes. Um, and I still make mistakes, everyone makes mistakes. I've heard many mistakes, even in live performances from the Boston Symphony. We make mistakes, it's okay. The thing is that you are constantly working to get better and try to make less mistakes. So for rehearsing and practicing with other people, in whether it's a small ensemble or a large ensemble, be that like a duet with one of your friends or in band class or orchestra or something, uh, there are a few things that are important to always have with you. First, 
your instrument. I can't tell you how many times somebody has showed up to band when I was, in, when I was a kid without their instrument. Well, what are you gonna do? You can't contribute in any way. So always remember your instrument. And the second, uh, the second most important thing to remember is a pencil. You need to have a pencil because chances are there's going to be some, especially in an ensemble, there's gonna be some kind of rehearsing that goes on where there's a give and take here and you have to mark something in your part, say, oh, I need to play this part softer, I need to play that part louder, I need, we're gonna go faster here or slower there, something like that. I guess that the pencil goes hand in hand with having your music with you. So music, pencil, instrument, and a good attitude, I think are the most important things. Another important tip in rehearsals and in performances and any time that you're playing in a group with other people is to have your ears open. Be listening to what the other people in your group are doing. Uh, the way that great orchestras like the Boston Symphony are able to play together and move together uh, musically is by always what I call having my radar up. Luckily for me, I have very big ears so I can hear a lot. Um, for me, I play second flute, so I have the first flute who is the main person that I'm supporting right here to my left, and her flute is generally ending right about here, so I can hear her very well. So as she moves and changes what she's doing, I can change with her, uh, and then her job is to have her radar up for the other principals in the orchestra. In your case, it might be a, it might be a band director or an orchestra conductor. You gotta have your ears open and your eyes open to see and hear what the other members of your ensemble are doing, and that is how you make music together. I hope you had a good time learning about the flute. Um, it's been one of my favorite things to do for the last 30 years, and I hope that you enjoy it some as well. Mm -hmm.